All right, let's see how this helps, right? Does this algorithm help? So again, as I said, right, if you take a linear array, you're not going to get any speed up. Again, in practice, you know, you don't come across graphs which are linear arrays. So let's look at some other graph, not a linear array, but just let's take an example and try to see how it works. So we'll take a simple example. Let's look at a grid graph. It's just a mesh, right? And so on. Okay, so this is the grid graph. Suppose this is the source. Okay. Now, how does the algorithm proceed? What's going to happen in the first iteration? The source is going to, well, this is the kind of zeroth iteration, the source you insert it into the priority queue in the beginning. What happened in the first iteration? In the first iteration, these vertices are going to get covered, right, by the algorithm. Just take a simplifying assumption that these vertices lie on separate processes, right? So that separate processors are working on these vertices. So you, you're going to relax them both in the same iteration, right? So these vertices get covered, then these vertices get covered, then these vertices get covered, and so on, right? So second iteration, this happens. Third iteration, this happens, and so on. Yeah, and somewhere in between this happens and so on. And then they start converging back, right? Suppose the sequential algorithm does the work of W. How much parallelism can I achieve using this, right? In the best case, what is the kind of parallelism I can achieve? I need to tell you how the processes are distributed, right? How do we distribute this amongst the processes? Okay, let's do a simple distribution. Let's just cut vertically, right? So this goes to P0, this goes to P1, this goes to P2, and so on, right? There's a difference between distribution and mapping. We said that we'll distribute the graph in a 1D fashion. What does that mean? So distributing graph in 1D means each processor gets n by p vertices, right? Now what we're talking about is which n by p vertices does a processor get? Yeah, is that clear? This is a different question. This is not distribution of the graph. This is about which particular vertices you're getting, right? So you may do that differently. So this is called mapping, right? Mapping vertices to prox processors. Yeah? We've already decided that we are going to do a 1D distribution of the graph. But now I also have to tell you which n by p vertices are going to go to which processor, right? So here I'm assuming a graph, which is a grid, and I'm telling you this is the way I'm going to map it. I'm going to give all these set of vertices to P0, all these set of vertices to P1 and so on, right? So these are N by P vertices, N by P vertices and so on, okay? If I'm going with this, then how many nodes are being processed in each iteration? Can you tell me? Let's focus on the extract min, right? How many nodes can I be doing an extract min on in each iteration. Let me make this a bit more symmetric. This has become a little bit asymmetric, right? So let's assume that there are two on each one of these, right? So I think there's one missing here. Yeah. Okay, that's better. How many processors are busy? How many extract mins are actually happening? The number of processors that are busy is going to be the number of processors which have non empty priority queues, right? Because each one of them is going to extract one element. Right? So how many extract means can happen? For this zero iteration, first iteration, for these number of iterations, only one processor will be busy. Yeah? For all these iterations, so how many iterations are these? Okay, what is the size of the graph? If there are n 
nodes and all this is root n by root n right root n by root n mesh how many iterations are we talking about in the first block there are root n by p right for root n by p iterations only one processor is going to be busy all the other ones are going to be idle they have nothing to do right then for the next root n by p iterations two processors are going to be busy because these processors are busy as well as these processors are busy right so two processors are busy similarly for the next three processors will be busy and so on yeah so for each root n by p iterations one processor is busy then two processors are busy and so on all the way up to p you know at some point all p processors will be busy and then it's again going to come back to p minus 1 p minus 2 and all the way back to 1 right so what's the average on an average how many processors are busy p by 2 is that clear i mean you just need to add all these up and divide by the number of iterations right so that's p by 2 on average p by 2 processors are busy in a given iteration right so what that means is that your speed up is going to be the sequential time by the parallel time what's the parallel time now it because on average p by 2 processors are busy so i should be able to do this in which is p by 2 so that's not bad that's a good mapping okay i'm getting almost linear speed up well efficiency is like half yeah there are other ways to divide it right so another way to divide it is that i basically do a 2d mapping now look what this is saying is that these particular n by p nodes i can think of this as a root n by root n grid of vertices and a root p by root p grid of processors right total vertices is n total processors is p so it's still n by p vertices per processor okay these are the n by p vertices that i have put on the first processor that's all i'm telling you right and now if i look at this how would it proceed well again this is called the wave front right so this is called a wave so the standard terminology i mean these are standard algorithms right so this is how the wave is proceeding now tell me at any given point of time how many processors could be busy what is the maximum number of processors which could be busy at any given time so if you look at this main diagonal right you realize that this is probably the one where the maximum work is being done and only root p processors are busy right so right from one processor being busy you go all the way up to root p processors being busy so on average you have root p by 2 processors that are busy yeah and so what is your speed up going to be your speed up is going to be if your sequential time is w your parallel time would be w by root p by 2 right and so this would give you a root p by 2 speed up so that's not as good okay again this is a very specific graph we are just taking this graph as an example to tell you you know what kind of speed up you are getting in practice right we just took an example this is not a theoretical result in practice you won't find grid graphs exactly right but it gives you some idea that look you can get very good speed ups in practice if you employ these kind of algorithms right if you look at that 1d data mapping you get speed ups of p by 2 which is very good efficiency constant efficiency 